<laughs> Front wheel skippy up off crests and third gear is not what I expected from a Honda Hornet. A parallel twin one, certainly. Almost feels KTM ish. <laughs> Hello, welcome back to the channel of Motorbike Nonsense. How is that for a morning view? We've got the 9am sun burning off the dew on the Surrey hillsides and we've got the all new Honda Hornet. Now I've literally just ridden it from my house. I had it delivered a couple of days ago, but it's been snowing. So this is my first ride. I'm taking you along. This isn't my full review. That's coming later. I just wanted to hop aboard and get out and about on it, frankly, because it's a nice morning. So as you can see, it's the new Honda Hornet. It's in yellow. It's got the optional £765 tour pack, which is this luggage, which I can confirm is wet inside. Um, yeah, it's not waterproof, but it does come with waterproof covers for these bits. I obviously haven't put them on. It's quite a low bike, but I'm still going to have to do a bit of a... <laughs> I'm so flexible, I've got so many layers on. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> we'll go over that way. That was good, wasn't it? Welcome to YouTube with me, who's really bad at it. But anyway, let's go for a little ride on the wee Hornet. I've been allowed out, I've done the hoovering this morning. Let's go for a little enjoyable bimble. Let's start it up and see if Honda's new 755cc parallel twin is uh, the second coming of Christ, or if it's just okay. It's actually sounds quite nice. The initial impressions are it's got some character, which is not something you necessarily expect from a parallel twin. Maybe not something you necessarily expect from a Honda, but this really does have a delicious burble to it, and it sounds like it would be excellent with a loud exhaust on it. <laughs> this isn't going to be me reading off all the specs, it's just going to be getting used to it. I think this bike... Bloody hell. <laughs> I think this bike is um, slightly undersold itself a little bit. You might think a Hornet is just going to be, you know, 90 horsepower parallel twin, a pound under £7,000 here in the UK. You might think it's going to be as dull as ditch water, but I can confirm from the first 200 meters this engine can put a smile on your face <laughs> it's got a burpy deep down rumble almost like my old Ducati hyper motard if you squint your ears a bit can you squint ears probably not now i think this bike's only got 26 miles on it the tires are brand new so you'll be forgiving me for not uh, getting my elbow down everywhere but I just want to go and have a little explore, really, and do some of the nicer back roads around here that possibly aren't covered in shite. Uh, although, given the snow that we've had lately, that might be a bit tricky. But yeah, so this is about as affordable as entertaining motorbikes get in the UK at the moment. Seven grand. That used to get you a street triple about ten years ago. It doesn't anymore. Not by about two or three grand. And Honda has come in with this new engine, which is also going in the Trans Alp, I believe. And it is bloody good. <laughs> it has got so much accessible torque from the get-go. That is my initial impression of this. And it just sounds really nice as well. So it's a 755cc parallel twin. It's got a 270 degree crank, which is really the secret sauce in this parallel twin recipe, isn't it? When people think of the old school parallel twins, which were dull as ditch water, they all had things like 180 degree uh, cranks and they just, they couldn't really uh, send any blood to anyone's loins. But this... <laughs> Yeah, this is quick. This is quick. It is already, um, already smashed my expectations, frankly. It feels urgent. It feels alive. It feels like Honda has done something quite special. Um, we'll talk about the handling a little bit later once things have warmed up and I've warmed up and I'm less scared of bidding it on a Badger's uh, prolapse. But yeah, so far so good. What I also like, initial impressions wise, is the dash. 
for seven grand you get a full color quite big dashboard you don't get that on some of the new street triples you get the the easy to read but quite basic looking screen from the trident on the new street triple r this honda under cuts it by a couple of grand and gives you the full color majonkers fine the graphics are a little bit clip art on the rev counter don't know if you can see that or the key things in the way but I quite like it. It's got a fuel gauge that's showing me my fuel consumption, my trip, and what riding mode I'm in. And yeah, riding modes are quite entertaining. I've only been on the bike for literally less than 10 minutes, and I've already worked out how to customise the user riding mode to turn traction control off, because that's what everyone does, right? I'm joking. Don't do that. But yeah, then you just press the mode button, and then close the throttle. Mode button, rain mode, user mode. Ah, it has put traction control back on for me in my user mode since I did an ignition cycle, but that might be a health and safety thing. But anyway, let's, uh, let's try and get some heat with these tyres. It is zero degrees. This one does not have the quick shifter, so if you saw my head bobbing forward then as I went for a gear, that's because the quick shifter is an option that is not equipped on this bike and uh, is a bit of a miss. To be honest, I like a quick shifter, but this is kind of putting me in the mind of learning to ride and doing clutches up shifts it's not really a problem it is fun but yeah this feels really quite sporty that's my initial go-to word for this is sporty uh, in terms of riding position i should probably get out of the way quite quickly i'm probably on the upper end of what is acceptable in terms of height for this bike but i am quite a tall man i'm six foot three which is what 189.5 centimeters or something uh, so yeah my knees fit in the cutouts so though look at that my knees fit in the cutout so i don't feel like i'm gripping it uh, around the ears like i do with something like ktm 890 juke and the reach of the bars is obviously really easy uh, it's just a very easy approachable riding position instant impressions are just one of a joyous motorbike that takes me back to my first days riding god it's quick as well <laughs> <laughs> the throttle response in sport mode is a little abrupt but again i always think you get used to that i run my ktm in the most sensitive mode and that's got twice the horsepower of this almost and i you do just get used to things like that and it makes it feel faster and more exciting the suspension i haven't been over any really bumpy roads yet but it does feel like it controls itself quite well over bumps and yumps it's not super soft and plush but neither is it rock hard and sporty and it doesn't feel crashy and cheap either so that feels pretty well resolved the only thing i would say is that from looking at this bike you can tell it's been be built down to a price i can't show you this but i might try and cut in some shots the rear brake lever and gear lever are basically cheap stamped metal but that's true on the triumph trident as well the things that you don't really see is where they cut the corners and it's true of this i haven't got a span adjustable clutch lever but i do have a span adjustable brake lever that's quite a common thing on affordable motorbikes and um yeah i wouldn't get too het up about it and the brakes themselves feel super reassuring actually they don't feel weak they don't feel too grabby i sort of want your jeep if you've never driven a jeep like that on the road they're pretty diabolical but you can exit every junction sideways feeling completely in control because they're just on knobbly tires that oversteer everywhere but anyway honda hornet is uh is speaking to me in ways that i didn't really imagine it would i kind of came to this i do i do cast a critical eye over bikes and i point out their flaws but this seems this seems like they've cut corners in the right places to get that price because none of it is getting in the way of my enjoyment of the machine <laughs> The camera probably didn't pick that up, but as I uh, clutchless upshifted into second gear, the front wheel came up. That's exciting, I like that. But again, this bike is aimed at, it's not just aimed at first time riders, it's aimed at anyone that wants an enjoyable road, uh, bike you can thrash on the road. And there's a lot to be said for this new class of middleweights, isn't there? That are coming out like the RS660, uh, this, what else? Bunch of other stuff. Because there's just really, 
lots of fun to be had as an experienced rider on a bike that you can thrash the nuts off. I was in a motorbike shop yesterday looking at potential new bikes. I was looking at a Prilia Torino V4 factory. And I'm in my head, I'm like, yeah, yeah, great. That'll be fun down here. It wouldn't be fun down here. I would be in second gear, chuntering around, and the bike would just be wanting to do 120 miles an hour around the corners and laughing at me. Whereas something like this just feels much more much more alive and that you're getting your money's worth. I always feel that if you had a breakdown of the cash value of a motorbike and the amount that you use on the road, on a litre bike, it is a tiny percentage of that pie chart. Whereas on this, it's a lot bigger. I'd say it's at least 75%. You can actually get through a couple of the gears before you get to 70 miles an hour. Yeah, goodness. What a cool thing. Well done, Honda. It's the character, it's the character of the engine that really sells this bike to me. It's grunty, it's talky, it feels naughty, it feels a little bit antisocial. In a way that actually, from memory, controversial internet statement coming up, the MT-07 didn't really do it for me. So yeah, I'm going to go down here and get some slightly faster, cleaner roads, and then I'll check back with you in a minute. Right, I did just stop quickly to check the GoPros were recording, and mercifully, well, you have been. But anyway, I just want to show you the flexibility of this engine. Third gear, third gear at 15 miles an hour, full throttle, 30, 40. It is so flexible. Should we try fourth? Right, fourth. It pulls fourth gear at 20 miles an hour really cleanly. Isn't that great? I mean, that is really nerdy, but if you do lots of town riding, it means less gear shifting. Can I go down to 15 miles an hour at fourth gear? No, it doesn't like that, but 20, 20 and above in fourth gear, and it's just really, really clean. The fueling is really crisp. It just feels very sorted out, frankly. I will find some faults with this, I'm sure, other than things related to the price. I'm not sure the luggage is worth 765 quid, for example, but, you know, I would probably go aftermarket. But I'll try using it over the next week or two and see what I think of it. But yeah, right, I'm actually meant to be going home now. Uh, my kids are sat in front of the TV watching Winnie the Pooh, but I'm gonna go to a slightly faster twisty road because I'm having too much fun. Buzz in. I was buzzing to ride this and uh, yeah, it is giving me a buzz. Things I didn't expect. Now, are you gonna stay there or are you just gonna pull out without looking? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll do a little, uh, I'll probably do quite big clutch up wheelies if you've got any skill. But even in my measly hands, it can do uh, dainty little ones. I'm actually just going to put traction control back on, back to level one, which is actually easy to do on the fly, if that is your bag, because these tyres, they're Dunlop Road Sports, and they're, they're fine, but you kind of need to build up to the confidence. They don't just ooze confidence. But also bear in mind, it is two degrees and the roads are wet and it's been snowing two days ago. So I'm being a little bit circumspect and I won't give my full review of the handling uh, until I've ridden it some more. But it turns in really sweetly and it just feels very neutral and very Honda, but in quite a quick turning sort of way, if that makes sense. It doesn't feel heavy. It doesn't feel like it lumbers from corner to corner. And it's not like some bikes with cheap components that just kind of don't have any flow to them. This this feels like you can flow nicely between corners. I'm just being a bit careful because I think the miles, the tires have only got 20 miles on them. Oh, lots of gravel. Hello. Hello gravel, my old friend. Please do not make my motorbike bend. But anyway, I'm going to wrap this up here because I'm going to head home and do some parenting. Ugh. But um, thank you for watching. If this has been helpful, uh, please subscribe to the channel because my full review of this will be out in a week or two, filmed on a proper camera of a proper walk around and I'll go into details on the specs and things like that. <laughs> <laughs> I was at the top of third gear and I didn't really break the speed limit very much but this bike I'll tell you what man I'll tell you what I know I'm meant to be doing an outro it's a phenomenal bike for the money like full stop not even for the money the sound on downshifts reminds me of my old hyper motard it's like I've got proper bassy vroom, vroom, like you're putting your foot into an ogre's bowels it's great I did expect that from Honda, which is kind of the summary of this video. Uh, if you're looking at one of these and you think you might want one, go and test ride one. If you can live with the looks, because it is a bit divisive, 
so far I'd recommend it. Um, thank you for watching. Sorry it's been waffly, sorry for the giggling, but it's just a cracking thing. And it's really brightened up my morning. I'll see you next time. I've been Tim Rohde, this has been the Honda Hornet. You've been great for watching this. I'll see you very soon. Goodbye.